Is this the best generator available for RV living out there today? Stay tuned and we'll show you. Big day in the Shore household. We got a new household appliance. Well, I don't know that it's a household appliance, but hopefully uh, the wind isn't too bad here. I'm hiding behind the truck. But let me turn the camera around and show you what we finally got after watching it on Amazon for like four or so months. Um, as you can see, I've got it on my trusty desk here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the initial setup. Um, typically what I do on generators is there's a break-in period so it comes shipped with no oil in it i'm going to put a little bit of oil down in the spark plug area so i'm going to pull the spark plug out then i'm going to fill up the oil reservoir at the bottom i think i'll have to look i think this takes like 12 fluid ounces or so um, i'll have to look at the instruction manual i'll give it a couple just real gentle pulls without trying to start it and then um, the first thing i'll do is the as far as our break-in is I will run it with no load on it for an hour. and uh, But I'll show you some of that here in a minute. Today is I'm gonna go ahead and take the front cover off here. I think, so I, I looked here and it looks like the spark plug is right here. So I can put a little bit of oil down in the spark plug, but I'm gonna do that last. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna kind of tell you what's going on. Um, so I'll show you the front of this generator and what all the plugs are and it has available. Um, Marley's here, if you guys can see that. Um, you know, he's here watching and supervising. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the oil plug and put in, I looked it up, it's 0.12 gallons. You know, when they're made over in China, they use really interesting uh, ways of monitoring how much we're supposed to use. I looked it up and it's 15.36 fluid ounces, which um, I'm just gonna put 15 ounces in. So, nice thing about this, generators it comes with a little pour spout and what's even better about that is that it can be used for filling or reef or, uh, or draining it screws right into the existing oil drain oil um, plug with a little o-ring there to keep it from leaking and then you can just pour oil right in there so I've got some new oil let me see this one, I'm trying to see if either of these are open. This one's good, it's at 28 fluid ounces. So I'm gonna go ahead, Marley, I gotta sit down, come on bud. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put 15 ounces of this oil in here. And, uh, but yeah, so hashtag, we're not sponsored. I paid for this full freight out of my own pocket or out of Michelle and I's pockets. Um, you know, they, uh, they did not pay me to buy this, but I've been watching it for a while. I've seen some good reviews. Shout out to Aaron and Chris over at Iron Irene Travels who did a video review of the dual fuel version of this. Um, I had actually been watching it for a while on Amazon and then saw that they had done a review and I got a chance to talk to them at the bash about it. Um, so that's eight ounces. So, um, you know, nice thing about this is, as you can see, if you're familiar with the uh, Predator that I had from trying to do math in my head. If, we're, uh, if you're familiar with the Predator that I had from Harbor Freight, it was 3,500 watts, but it was large and with uh, gas in it, it weighed about 110 pounds. And this thing is like 50 pounds um, with oil or with gas in it, it's gonna be probably about 56 or 57. Um, so it's really a lot lighter, smaller form factor, and not really losing all that much as far as wattage. That was a 3,500. Uh, with running at 3,200, this is a 3, 3,300 with running at 3,000. So, and we've got micro uh, air easy start on our air conditioner, so we don't need the real higher wattage. So, um, so I've now put uh, the oil into the machine, and I have finished that up. And so, let me take this off. I'm back on the operating table. Sorry, I got a magnetic dipstick for the oil. Um, so that it you'll catch any bad um, sh shards and stuff of metal. Um, let me make sure it fits in here. Yep, there it goes. 
Um, so that's one thing I bought extra. I think that dipstick was like maybe $10 extra. So, uh, you know, that was pretty good. So I got that in there tight. Um, let me turn this around for you. Let me put the lid back on here. Um, I'll turn this around and show you the front so that you can see what type Two of connections AC outlets. it has. It's got the RV outlet that came with the adapter to be able to plug directly in because this is a twist lock. Um, the smaller version, the 3200, does not have a twist lock, but this one does. It's got the eco uh, saving, so it throttles it down when it's not in heavy use. It's got the warning lights. It's got a breaker there. It's got a parallel ports here, and then it's got a DC um, USB plugs right here. So if you need to plug directly in, we're never going to plug. Plus, as you can see, the nice thing is it's got covers for all of this. So you don't have to worry so much about it getting dirt and sand inside. It does not have a push start. Um, it's just got the uh, pull, you know, the pull cord like a lawnmower does. Um, but now I'm going to uh, take the cover off up top and put a little bit of oil, oil, a few drops of oil down in the spark plug and pull this a few times to prime it. And then I'll take it outside and start it. And I'll show you that process in a minute. Okay, I am getting ready to pull the spark plug out to put a little oil in it. One thing I forgot to mention is this generator does not have a external screen so or does not necessarily track the time between uses or total usage. So what I did is I got this hour meter that's super easy to connect. You basically just wrap it around the spark plug wire and it will keep track of the hours that it's running. So um, I'm going to be installing After that break in period. I typically charge or change the oil every 100 hours. All so. right, I filled it up with gas. I'm going to do a, a few uh, soft starts just to get the uh, get it moving. I'm not trying to start it. Oh, you know what? I probably need to turn it on to choke. <laughs> I got it on choke. Let's see. in period and the hour meter is running you can see this number flashing I don't know if the camera will pick it up and you see that little thing flashing right there which means it's got signal coming through so uh, they said after about uh, six minutes it should start saying 0.1 which one means 0.1 of an hour so all right we'll check back in a little I'm not gonna sit here and make you watch the whole break-in process see you soon So we've now had a chance to run this thing for just over 10 hours and we wanted to give you our opinion of it. Um, you know, coming from a Harbor Freight Predator 3500, which weighed approximately 115 pounds when it was full of gas to something that's probably right around 55 pounds is a huge upgrade without much loss at all in power. We've had this thing running for up to 2000 watts at any one time and it just chugs right along without any we had no problem running the air fryer which is about 15 to 1700 watts we were able to run our air conditioner with no problem and while we don't have the ability to test this i imagine it wouldn't have any problem with running two air conditioners especially if you have a micro air easy start on there like we do on our one air conditioner and we had no problem charging our lithium batteries uh, we were pulling probably anywhere from 40 to 55 amps at any one time. So typically in the past, when we had a screen on our Predator, we were able to see that we were pulling about 18 to 2,000 watts when charging just our lithium batteries, and this thing works like a champ. So, it's a win in both areas. Effectiveness, weight, portability, everything. Uh, Gen Max 3300i, two thumbs up from the Wandering Shores. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please click the like, 
subscribe, and notification bell so you're notified when we put out other videos like this in the future. Thanks, everyone.